All right, I'm gonna share my screen and let's start with making sure everybody is looking at the same thing. You should be looking at a report from Booker Metrics that shows uh, closed units, market share for Coral Springs Parkland. Chuck, everybody looking at the same thing? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yes. Okay, uh, here's what I wanna share with you while you're looking at this. In 2021, last year through the end of May in Coral Springs Parkland, there were 1,897 units closed. 1,897 units closed in 2021. A year later, 2022, there have been 1,538 units closed during the same time period. Now that's a decrease of 18.9%. And let's stop right there. And let me just ask you, what are your thoughts? What's your aha? Uh, how does that make you feel? If you have any emotion around this, what, and be transparent, be honest. If you're scared, say it scares me. I wanna hear that. I don't want to hear somebody say they're scared just to hear that. That's not, my, that's not my point. But if you are, I want you to tell us. All right, Diane. So I thought just based on what I've been experiencing at Open Houses over the past few weeks, there's a lot less people um, putting in offers. There's a lot less people coming to these open houses. And then the ones who I'm speaking about selling their homes, they're still hesitant because now they feel like the interest rates of going into a new home or even moving is stopping them. So I'm definitely, I'm feeling like we have been in this um, training to prepare ourselves on how to handle this. And I feel pretty confident that I can handle it, but it's still a little scary because I came into the business while everything was super hot and crazy. And now there's definitely, as uh, we say on James Shaw, the market's evolving. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that I'm laughing because uh, I love the way James Shaw uh, frames everything. The market's evolving. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, Right. But we've been getting ready for this. We've yeah. been learning about this, but it's still, Scary. Yeah. So the John Dietz version of the markets evolving is we're headed for tough times. How's that? You're not going to get real estate light with John Dietz. You're going to get it in the face. It is what it is. It's a tough market. Call it what it is, because that's what it is. Definitely. Michael Topo. Good morning. Thank you, John. Yep. Uh, Diane's right. I held an open house last weekend that if it, the property was on the market 90 days ago, I would have had 30, 40, 50 families there. I had three. Mm -hmm. Three. Yeah. Um, so just kind of a big kind of eye opening. And, and, I, and I know this, but, but my point is this. It is more important than ever, if you get a listing to price it right. Can you say that again, please? Yeah, it's more important than ever if you have a listing to price it right. Can you tell us why that's important? Because now, if you don't price it correctly, you're chasing the market down. Right, we have to set the right expectations with our sellers. And if we price it incorrectly, the seller is going to lose money. Um, 100% agree, right? And Michael, I have some thoughts around that, shocker, that I would love to share, but I don't know, I don't want to interrupt you. Was, did you have any, okay. Thank you. So 
Here's what Michael's talking about, guys. And I've been coaching with Michael for many, many years. So uh, when you hear Michael talk, you probably hear me talk, right? Hopefully that's the case. And, and vice versa, by the way. Uh, between 2012 and 2022, the market's been doing this. Yes or yes? Yeah. Right? In other words, values have been going up depending on price, depending on location. Annually, year over year, values have been going up by as much as 20% and maybe even more depending, okay? Fair enough. Now, you're sitting at the kitchen table with a homeowner who's reading these reports. They're, they've got information available to them. They live on Google. They're all experts <laughs> and they have a house that the last property that sold in their neighborhood that's comparable to theirs that sold in the last six months, it sold for $500,000. Now, because they've been reading these reports, they're pushing to price the property at five fifty. dollars because they have the best house in the neighborhood because their home is nicer than the one that sold for $500,000. This is all their opinion, by the way. Uh, it, some of it may be fact. That's important to note. And in most cases, if it's fact, it's exaggerated fact. So their mindset is they're gonna get $550,000 for their home. Well. If we went back a year in time and we're having that same conversation, if the real price that that property is going to sell for is 510, is that more than the last one that sold? Say yes. If the real price the property is gonna sell for is 510, if you priced it at 550 a year ago, you would still be okay. Because the market is it going to eventually catch up with the price? Because the market is rising and the market's going to eventually catch up with the price. So it'll sell for maybe 530, but it'll sell. Now, today, you take that same property and they're not, they don't have the same data that you do. They don't have, they're not local economists of choice like you are. They're not strategic pricing professionals like you are. So they don't have the same information that you do and they price the property at $550,000 and we're not in a market that's doing this anymore. We're in a market that's doing this. It, it's flattening out. Maybe it's still going up a little bit because there's a shortage of inventory, but it's not at the same rate. And we're fishing with our bait out of the water and that seller is gonna to have to drop their price in order to sell it. Now, if I use the same example to talk about what happened in 2006, seven and eight, because typically what we find is this time might be like that time, script. This time might be like that time. In 2006, seven and eight, the market didn't do this, the market, than this. And what happens when a market shifts, it shifts slowly and then suddenly. And it feels like the bottom just drops out. It causes panic. It causes panic in homeowners and it causes panic for real estate agents as well. And now you've got a property that was priced at $550,000 that was $40,000 overpriced day one. And back in 2006, seven and eight, by the time you got to day 30, it was $50,000 overpriced. By the time you got to day 180, when the listing expired, it was $70,000 overpriced. Now, if the seller needs to sell, if they have to sell, if they're motivated to sell, they're going to chase the market down. That's what Michael was talking about. They're going to drop their price to 510, but now 510 is too high. It would have been the right price if they started there, but now it's too high. So then they drop their price to 500, but now 500 is too high. And then they drop their price to 490, but now 490 is too high. And then they drop their price to 480, except now 480 is too high. 
and they're chasing the market down. Now, in order to get your property sold in markets like this, you take that same home that's probably gonna sell for about 510 because the last one sold for 500. Your home is nicer, it's in better condition, it has more upgrades, it's in a better location. The strategy to get that home sold today is priced at between 490 and 500. Now, you're gonna get multiple offers and it's probably gonna sell for 510, which is what it was gonna sell for in the beginning. But it, but it sold. Here's the other thing. Not every home sells in this market. Going This time might be like that time. If we go back to 2006, seven and eight, one out of three homes that went on the market sold. So we didn't have a conversation about how much is your, going to home, is your home going to sell for or how long is it going to take to sell. The conversation was, is your home going to sell? Because two out of three homes that go on the market won't sell. Um, Nick, can you close those doors for me? Because that noise is coming in here. It's very distracting. Thank you, sir. Michael. Yeah, that was I what would you're saying, right? A hundred percent. And because we've been taught pricing brackets, I wouldn't price it at 490. At 500, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I would price that home at 500. Here's the point. Thank you, Michael. But you've got to have a conversation at the kitchen table similar to the one that I just had with you. Pull out your, pull out your legal pad. Zig Ziglar used to call it a thinking pad. And start drawing pictures and have a conversation with the same energy and passion that I just did. This is critically important. And by the way, you're, you, you, the drunk monkey in your, in your head is going to tell you they don't want to hear this. I'm going to lose a listing if I do this. Guys, if I go to the doctor and there's something serious wrong, if I've got something that is going to require treatment or surgery or something, I want the doctor to tell me the truth. I don't want the doctor to say, oh, you're, you're fine. You know, you've got blank, but it's cool. It's all good. No, I want the truth. All right, Kim, talk to me. So this feels a little um, off subject now, and I can't remember why I was going to say it. <laughs> oh, good. What I was going to say was one. I've been I've been looking forward to this moment because mm -hmm. I know how to price, and I'm confident in that. There you go. Uh, and I, I think that I can set myself apart as a result. Um, but what I was going to say was, you know, I started this in October, 2020 in, in sales. And I've been hearing since I started what an awesome market this is, how hot the market is, how great it is. You must be doing so well. And it's been really challenging to get started and to find success. And, and I've done, you know, I'm really grateful for what I've done in it. However, I have not achieved what I want to or what people, the perception is, um, or what realtors that have been in this, in this business for, you know, a decade or more have achieved in the past couple of years. Um, and now I hear that it's getting worse and getting harder and I'm just struggling with my mindset. Um, I think as a result of all of that, I just feel beat up and tired. <laughs> And to be completely honest, um, I don't even like saying those things out loud, but that's how I'm feeling. And so I'm just curious, you know, can we hold on to this? Yay, it's shifting. I can finally take market share and get ahead. I mean, is that is that where we're going or what what are other, how are other people feeling about this shift? And has everyone seen so much success over the couple past couple of years? Am I just not doing well or what what's can anyone enlighten me on this? <laughs> so, Kim, you asked that. Thank you so much. I really do appreciate it. That's exactly what I was looking for, by the way. Thank you for being transparent and uh, sharing your concerns, right? So, everybody, I'm looking for somebody who hasn't spoken yet uh, to start with. Um, Diane, I don't mean you. Don't no, think that I'm, I'm direct. Oh, Okay. Uh, there's less inventory, she, so there's less transactions. There's fewer inventories, so there's fewer transactions. Okay, fair enough. And inventory was low a year ago too, guys. 
So keep that in mind. Here's the facts. And Nick, I don't know if you were in here when I shared this. And 1,897 units closed year to date through the end of May 2021. Same time period, a year later, 2022, 1,538 units have closed. It's a, it's a decrease of 18.9%. There are fewer people buying. I don't know if it's because there's less inventory. I really don't. I'll tell you what I think it is. I think that we borrowed buyers and sellers from the future back in October, November, and December, that there are people who sold their home, bought a home to take advantage of the market, to take advantage of low interest rates. And Megan put it in the chat, and she's absolutely right. She said, the same buyer who bought a $475,000 house in January is the same buyer who can only buy 375 to 385 now. She's right because of affordability. She's absolutely right. So I think the biggest reason that the number of units is down is because there's not an endless supply of people who are buying, of people who are selling. And you borrow buyers from the future when you're in a hot market, which is exactly what happened. Oh, Michael, you've got your hand up. And I'm break. You go ahead, talk to us. Diane, you get to talk if Michael gets to talk. <laughs> Kim, I, I uh, wholeheartedly feel uh, how you feel, right? There's, there's definitely this um, anxiousness. I don't think there's fear, but there's anxiousness. Um, and I don't, I'm not a quote ninja like John is. Um, but I would say this, um, and just kind of thinking of the MREA, it's, it becomes more important now to find the motivated, right? And to double down on your lead gen activities. And it's not easy, right? I, this first half of the year, let's say from December to June, I'm a, about the same amount of transactions I did all of last year, right? So I've had an incredible start of this year. Um, and at the same time, it's, I feel the market the same way you do. And I'll be honest, it's a grind. We've mm -hmm. got guys in our office like Gonzalo, Nick Grimaldi, and they're doubling down on their lead gen more than I am. Mm -hmm. And they'll tell you firsthand You've got to go out there and get it because it's not just going to fall on your lap. Um, so I think that's important, right? Definitely lead, you know, double down on your on your on your lead generation activities, and also maybe look at other lead sources, right? Maybe different ways to capture leads. I'm not talking about buying leads, but you know, maybe join networking groups, right? I've, I've really really tried to do that, um, and just just you know. Yesterday, I dedicated all day just to care calls, right? Going back to people that already know you, trust you, love you, um, and just check in. And at some point, they're going to ask you about real estate. Good stuff. Thank you, Michael. Uh, Megan, talk to us. <clears throat> so I got two things for you. The first one is Tara and I went on a listing appointment yesterday in Stewart. The sellers, um, they fired their other agent and called us. Mm -hmm. And um, they were priced at $459, reduced their price to $439. Mm -hmm. Tara and I left that listing appointment with a signed listing agreement with them pricing at $375. Mm -hmm. Because okay. we showed them data. And then we asked the question, what is what does that make you think? How does that make you feel? And we made them come to that decision. Um, so that's point number one. And then point number two is I feel that everybody that um, went away from all their marketing efforts and putting in the work for every single client, um, they're going to have a rude awakening in this because they stopped doing the work and they got out of the habits of doing everything that they needed to do. So the people that continue to do the work during this madness 
are going to be the ones that continue to succeed in this market. Thank you, Megan. 100%. I agree. You guys hear that? Mm -hmm. Those are real conversations, guys. Mm -hmm. Real conversations. Now, Kim, here's what I would encourage you to do. Uh, pull the statistics for your market, right? I can tell you in Coral Springs Parkland, which is the immediate market for this market center, uh, so far this year, there's been 1,538 homes closed, right? I would do the same thing for the market that you're in. So you know how many homes are selling, okay? Important information to know. Now, I had a conversation with Scott Tolar, who's the general manager for the Waxman Group yesterday, and he asked me um, if I was concerned. And I'm going to share with him what I told you, with you, what I told him. What I told him was if I were a real estate agent, I'd have zero concern. Matter of fact, I'd be excited. I'd be excited because this is the type of market that I thrive in. Why? Because this is a type of market where sellers need real estate agents who know what they're doing. Perfect example, Megan just told us a perfect example of the appointment that she and Tara went on. They saved a seller from a bad experience that they would have had because they initially hired the wrong real estate agent. They hired somebody that was willing to overprice a property by almost $100,000. And in a really good market, that might work. You know, in a really good market, everybody benefits from that market. Even real estate agents who don't have the same skills that you do. This is a skill-based market. And I'm a skill-based real estate agent. And, and, my, and don't hear this the wrong way, guys. Um, please don't. My mindset, if I was selling real estate today, and understand I'm not, I'm a team leader, okay? I, don't, I haven't been on a listing appointment in seven years. If I was selling real estate today, I'd sell 10 homes every month. I don't care what the market's doing. I'm closing 10 deals. Kim, my mindset, if I'm you, is just tell me your monthly goal. If it's two deals a month, three deals a month, whatever it is, just give me a number. Three. Three. Are there more than three homes being sold in your market a month, every month right now? Yes. Then there's enough. Mm -hmm. Then there's enough. That, that's, that's my mindset. Now, I guarantee you it may not be 1,538 like Coral Springs Parkland. This is a pretty populated area, right? It, 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 let's just say it's 1,000. Let's say it's 500. If there's 500 homes being sold every month in your market, can you find three? Yes? yes. Will it take more effort than it did a year ago? Definitely. Yes. And it's possible. Matter of fact, it's probable as long as you do the work. Mike gave you great advice. Double down on your lead generation to find the motivated. That's it. Double down on your lead generation to find the motivated. The motivated are people who are ready, willing, and able to sell, people who are ready, willing, and able to buy. And it doesn't mean that we're going to ignore people who don't fit that description. They go into that nurture box where we're going to stay in touch with them and nurture the relationship until they get ready so that we're creating emotional proximity so that when they do become ready, willing, and able, it's, I'm calling Kim. It's a come list me. If I were selling real estate, this market doesn't scare me at all. I'm excited. As a team leader, honestly, it concerns me. Why? Because I can't go do the job for you. You have to do it. I succeed through others. All right, here's the other thing that I would do. Local economists of choice. Become a ninja 
expert at crunching numbers. The more you know, the more powerful you are, the more of a skill-based real estate agent you are. So I would take the market that I work and I would divide it geographically. And, and I'm just drawing four boxes here for the purpose of drawing four boxes. It could be eight, it could be 10, it could be 20, really doesn't matter. And let's just say that your market center is here. That's the center of your market. That's where you focus your business. And you're gonna work 10 miles in every direction. Now, if you're here in Coral Springs, you're laughing because you're like, John, I can't go 10 miles west. I'll be in the middle of the Everglades. And there's no homes out there. That is correct. All right. So, however, though, I would look at the market that I work and I would divide that into four different groups. And I probably divide each of these groups into four other groups. In other words, I would geographically buy zip code, no supply and demand on the spot. So if I'm having a conversation with someone and they say, how's the market? My answer is, it depends. Tell me where you live. Oh, I'm in Parkland or I'm in Coral Springs. What's your zip code? 33065. Oh, okay. Then the market is. Now, here's how you find out the answer to the market is. In each of these boxes, I want you to, in $50,000 price ranges, so from 350 to 400, and Kim, it might be different in North Carolina. I'm starting at 350 here because that's pretty much the average price. By the way, when I was selling real estate in the Tampa Bay area, it was $189,000. Wow. Just wow. take that in. Yeah. perspective right it, was a long time ago. it wasn't that long ago no it was seven years ago it wasn't that long ago i sold 127 homes my last year how, how do you think i'd like to be selling homes in coral springs right now yeah. hell yes. yes all right so three funny trail 350 to 400 400 to 450 450 to 5, 5 550, 550 to 6, 6 to 650, 650 to 7, 7 to 750, 750 to 8, all the way up to a million dollars. Now I'm going to go in $100,000 increments. A million to a million, 100,000, 1 million, 100,000, and 1 million, 200,000, and on and on and on and on and on and on. And I'm going to look to see, and I'm doing this every week, how many active listings are there in the geographic location that I'm looking at between 350 and four, between 450 and five. How many in that same price range in the same location sold in the last six months? Six months, six months. Thank you, sorry, Hi D here. Six months is just a number. Okay, this is not to determine value. This is to determine supply and demand. Then I would take B and I would divide it by six. So if there were 18 sold in the last six months, then I have three selling every 30 days. You guys with me? And D is A divided by C. So, for example, if there are 36 active listings, and that's kind of ridiculous because nothing's got 36 active listings right now. Let's make it more realistic. If there's 12 active listings, and in the last six months, if 18 sold, then C is three. You guys with me? D is A, which is 12, divided by C, which is three, which means my inventory is what? Four months. Four months. So I'm having a conversation with someone and they say, how's the market? Where do you live? I live in Coral Springs Country Club. Oh, nice neighborhood. I know that neighborhood. I know it's 33065. And I can tell them, well, the average price 
in Coral Springs Country Club is $550,000. And the market for homes between $550,000 and $600,000 is there's a three month supply of inventory right now, which means if you put your home on the market, on average, it's gonna take three months to get your home sold. But here's what else it means. It means if there's nine homes for sale and there's three selling every 30 days, in order to sell your home, you got to be one of the top three. Now, I'm having a conversation with you, Nick, at a party. And I just shared with you what I just shared with everybody in here today. Do I know the market? Yes, you do. Do I sound like a local economist of choice? Do I sound like, sound like a strategic pricing professional? Yes. Are you, am I somebody that you would want to hire? Yes. That's who you've got to be to succeed in this market. Oh, now, a year ago, oh my god a year ago how's the market the market is amazing you want to sell your home that worked <laughs> that worked it doesn't work today and i'm sorry for yelling but guys this is passion this is me who can't go out and do it for you trying to get you to get this so you can be successful becky Wow, and absolutely a million percent. We have to know more 